Hey there internet, my name is Luxander, and I'm doing a video now that I probably should have done a long time ago. This is me explaining what non-binary gender is. What is non-binary gender? What does non-binary mean? Answers at 11. I'm making this video partially because I just realized that I don't have a resource of my own to send to family members or friends who are unfamiliar with the concept of non-binary gender if I don't feel like explaining it all every single time I need to explain it, I should have a video to refer back to, so I'm creating this so that I can explain it in a simple way and hopefully other people who need to send it to people to have them come to a better understanding can use this as a resource for that purpose. What does it mean when someone says that they are non-binary? Let's look at the term non-binary and see what the context is for that word. We use the term non-binary while we're discussing people's gender, their internal sense of how their, their feelings about their gender match up or don't match up with their physiological prescribed sex. Generally, in the society that we live in, in the United States, gender is considered to be binary. You are either a man or you are a woman. So the term non-binary is supposed to be a very broad term for anyone who doesn't strictly identify as a man or a woman in this dichotomy that has been presented to us. So in the loosest of terms, a person who is non-binary simply has a gender experience that is not exclusively I am a man or I am a woman. It could be that they feel some mixture of the two or sort of between them or outside of that context. Like, I feel that my gender is kind of outside of that context of, oh, am I a male or am I female? But different non-binary people feel differently about their gender, and they sometimes change the way they feel about their gender over time, and no one non-binary person has the same experience. It is a very, very broad term for anyone who doesn't specifically say, I am a man or I am a woman. So there can be a lot of variation there and I want that to be very clear to anyone who is just coming into this conversation that I can iterate to you what my experience has been like, but that's not going to necessarily be reflective of everyone else in the community. Sometimes people will respond to the notion of non-binary people with a question similar to, well, well, what does that mean? Like, how can you not be a man or a woman? What, like, what does it even mean to not be a man or not be a woman? What does it mean to be something else? And so I usually approach that by telling people how I attempted to, I attempted to embody the role of a woman and I attempted to embody the role of a man and that really, really did not work for me. The process of elimination of figuring out that you're non-binary, for me at least, was basically an exercise in trying to take on this role and see how it fit for me, or take on this identity label and see how it fits for me, and then going through a process of just narrowing it down because there wasn't a good, good place for me in a binary set of gender. I tried to fit in the role of womanhood, and that includes being gender non-conforming woman. I tried that, and I also, when I first realized that I had gender feelings, I thought that I was a binary trans man because I didn't know what non-binary was, and I tried out that role and those pronouns, and that also didn't really feel very nice to me, even being a gender non-conforming man. I experience a decent amount of social dysphoria, so dysphoria is when there is a conflict between the internal feeling that you have and what is going on outside of, of, of that internal feeling. So social dysphoria is, I know what I identify as, but sometimes when people see me, they address me differently, and that causes me distress, a medical diagnosis level of distress, that's what dysphoria is. It's medically so much distress that it, it, it impedes your ability to function. Social dysphoria is uh, sort of paired up with body dysphoria, which I'm not really gonna dive into too deeply right now. Body dysphoria is when you have the internal sensation in your brain of what your gender should be like, and then your body is somehow conflicting with that. So perhaps someone who is born with one set of genitalia feels that that is very uncomfortable for them and they should in their mind have a separate set. There is a brain body map that is not 
coinciding, and so that's what body dysphoria is. Social dysphoria is when you have people addressing you a certain way. Part of the thing that helps me be secure in knowing that I am non-binary is the discomfort that I experience when people gender me as either male or female. When someone says sir, or when they say ma'am, these both are, are uncomfortable for me in various levels, and when people use the pronouns she or he, those also cause me a decent amount of discomfort, and so I go by the pronouns they, them. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can try out the Spivak pronouns a, m, er. I actually like those a lot better. I'm not getting into that too deeply right now also. I find that attempting to inhabit a role as male or female or as man or woman in the current way that we understand it, even with the allowances for gender nonconformity, those things really do not work for me. They cause me discomfort, they cause me pain, it impedes my ability to function if I am attempting to convince myself and others that I am something that I am not. I feel very comfortable now, now that I have come to an understanding of my gender, and I've been out for 11 years now, so I've had a while to think things through and try different pronouns and figure out where I am, and for me, and for many other non-binary people, it is so much more comfortable to embrace the the feeling and the knowing that you are non-binary, and then from there saying, I can dress however I want, I can wear makeup if I want, or I can wear plaid if I want. It's different to approach it from the stance of, I am non-binary, and then I would like to self-explore and express myself, versus, I am trying to make myself be male or female, I'm trying to make myself comfortable with being addressed as male or female, and neither of those things are working for me. It's very similar to what a binary trans person goes through, and I just want to note really quickly, I consider myself non-binary and trans, but not every non-binary person also identifies as transgender. That's my experience, and I think that those labels coexist for me. But uh, I was gonna say, the experience of discomfort with being gendered in one way or another is not very different from the experience of a binary trans person. So if someone was born male, assigned male, and they feel that they actually should have been born female, or if they feel like they are a woman with a transgender experience, that's all valid, and they they experience discomfort being called he. They really don't like that. They feel affirmed and whole when they are referred to as she and ma'am. And for non-binary people, it's exactly like that, except I am not comfortable being referred to as either of these two things because I'm not either of these two things. I am somewhere else. It is complicated to explain sometimes, but very simply put, it's about feelings of belonging, and trying on different labels, and seeing how they make you feel, and realizing that a label that is not strictly binary, ergo, non-binary, is actually the one that fits and feels comfortable and is affirming. Sometimes I think that this may come across as very frivolous to people, because the way that I explain it is by telling you what is going on in my brain, is telling you what my feelings are telling me. But that is, first of all, that's how we diagnose dysphoria. You diagnose dysphoria by speaking to a doctor and having them suss out how much distress these various things are causing you, and that is the only way we have currently of medically confirming that transition is needed for a patient's well-being. But I would like to just offer that I don't think it's possible for anything in the brain to be a fully esoteric, non-physical concept. This is part of why I don't like to use the term gender identity, because I don't think that it's just a thing in your brain that you've made up. I don't think that it's just an aspect of personality on an esoteric concept in which we have sort of disembodied the concept of self from the physical brain which gave birth to that concept of self. What seems to be increasingly likely with transgender people is that there are phases of development in utero where the, the parts of your body develop at different times. So your heart 
kind of develops earlier than your brain, and your genitals come up at a different time in the pregnancy than your brain, so if you were to perhaps have an excess of a type of hormone in your body while you are going through one stage of development, and a different amount of that horm- of, of the sex hormones at a different phase of development, it's likely that what's happening is that the brain is developing a sense of sex that is contradicting the physical expressed sex that that person is going to be born with. Obviously, it can be hard to study this. It's hard to note the specific differences between different kinds of brains. It's hard to study brains because they're inside people's heads and you need them to live, but it seems increasingly likely and I am willing to believe that being trans is the result of your exposure to various hormone levels while you were being gestated inside of your parent. I think that gender has to be physical because nothing that happens in your thoughts comes from somewhere that isn't your physical brain. Mental illness is physical in the brain. It's measurable. You can do scans and see the impact that that mental illness has on the physical composition of the brain, and I don't think that trans people are any different than that. So I'm just saying that because I want to clarify that just because we are talking about a phenomenon in the thoughts does not mean that that's not coming from somewhere genuinely measurably physical, and that is much more grounded, I think, than the frivolity of, oh, it hurts my feelings to be called this. It's not just that it hurts your feelings to be called something, it's that it is so deeply and wildly invalidating to who you know you are as a person that it drives people to hurt themselves and kill themselves. That's what medical dysphoria is. It is distress that keeps you from living your life normally and happily and peacefully on a regular basis. Not every trans person feels that they have dysphoria, though. Not everyone's incongruity between their gender and their body um, makes them want to hurt themselves. So there are some variations in experience there. That's just, dysphoria is the way that you get medical treatment in our current medical establishment. And it's unfortunate, but I find that using dysphoria is the you, it's usually a good way to get people to understand where things are coming from. Um, it, I think people have a harder time understanding the idea of pursuing gender euphoria as opposed to escaping gender dysphoria. I'm gonna reel things back in a little bit because I feel like I may have just gone on a little bit too detailed of a ramble. I just wanted to kind of try to elucidate why it is that non-binary people exist, I guess, like what it is that drives people to openly and outwardly identify as non-binary and ask for different pronouns to be used when talking about them. It's very much a real experience that people have. It's not frivolous. It's not just a choice that is made. It's usually, if anything, something that most of us would not choose if we had the option. I can't say how I feel about that at this stage in my life because I've just accepted who I am to such a degree that I don't I don't know what it would be like if I wasn't trans or if I wasn't non-binary. But my point is that most of us don't go out of our way to pick up identities and immerse ourselves in communities that are stigmatized. It's not fun to be part of a group that is stigmatized. Being transgender is extremely stigmatized and that doesn't even get into being non-binary as a subset of being transgender. Binary trans people have, they face difficulties and everything, but I don't know that they deal with the utter just erasure of their existence in the way that non-binary people do. I think it's really uniquely difficult to live in a society where you may be accepted as binary trans, like I get, I have a secondary binary pronoun set that I allow people to use because it sometimes feels like the closest thing I will get to actual acceptance. That doesn't mean that it's any less erasing of my non-binary identity that people are more willing to accept me as someone who would have been binary trans if they hadn't realized that non-binary was a thing. And I guess I'll just tack on to the end here that non-binary people don't dress or look in any particular way, 
and that you don't have to strive to be perfectly gender neutral in your appearance in order to identify as non-binary or in order to be valid as a non-binary person. Some people are okay with m just keeping their original gender expression from when they were younger and before they realized they were non-binary. Some people realize they're non-binary and have a what looks like a very binary transition where they seek to be seen as like the opposite gender for the sake of their comfort. And you have people like me who tend to be a little bit more gender neutral in their appearance, who tend to be somewhat androgynous, if that's the word that you would use for that. But that doesn't make me better than a person who is non-binary who continues to use a somewhat binary gender expression for the sake of their comfort or safety. I am not more non-binary and I'm not better than anyone because of my appearance being more easily read as neutral than others. And that's also not touching on the fact that it's actually quite annoying that people call me androgynous all the time when my goal is to seem fairly masculine, but that's a video I already made. I think I've touched on most of the important bases. If there is anything that you think I missed, um, feel free to comment it down below and I will supplement this video if needed in the future. If there are any things that you thought were unclear that you would like me to clarify, I would be absolutely happy to respond to your comments and to clarify those issues. I really hope that this is a good resource um, for people to send to their families if they feel that an, an explanation could be better given than what they're capable of doing. If this works for that, I absolutely use it for that purpose. That's what it's for. And I would like to briefly apologize for missing last week. I was on a medication that was making it so that I couldn't sleep, so I couldn't really function, and I definitely couldn't make a video last week, so hopefully this is good getting back on track. Hope you liked it. That's gonna be all from me today, though. If you liked this video, please give me pretty analytics to look at and comments to read. Find me on Patreon, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, and I hope you have an okay day. Bye. Many accolades to the patrons who support this work, and a special thank you to The Gay Agenda, Amber Music, David Walter, Jenny Swindles, Gretchen Becker, Wellington Marcus, Pine Snake, Jess Zendrex, and Mr. Atheist, your support is most appreciated.